guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and today we're doing the Reader's Digest condensed version of Summer Bash. Um, it's still a long one. It's uh, it's still two hours long and change. Two hours, 15 minutes. Uh, plus, I still need to insert the narration that I'm filming right now. So it's it's going to be kind of long. I try I cut it down as much as I possibly could. But uh, let's get into it. Uh, we're going to start with... Um, just me walking around a little bit Friday morning, just getting set up. I was enjoying a little quiet time about 5.30 in the morning before anybody showed up. Um, so uh, let's just do a quick walk around, look at a little bit of the swap meet. Some guys set up uh, Thursday, you know, the day before, and uh, we took a peek at some of their stuff. And it's fun to see what people bring to the, to the swap meet. A lot of really nice stuff. So let's go take a peek around. I'll walk you around the swap meet. But like I say, most of the stuff's still covered up. Um, under here uh, is the Mad Catter. There's a battle bot under here in one of their awards. That's the Mad Catter. That's a, one of the battle bot uh, um, uh, contenders. That's a heavyweight battle bot, 250 pound class. Uh, Joe Way's stuff's all covered up. We got people showing up today to set up their swamp meet. You see, we set out tables, and we put their name on the tape. There's tape on every on every uh, workstation. So some people showed up yesterday, and some people and set up. You see, I don't know who this is. I think that's Aaron, but he brought his stuff, and he just covered it. Or Dennis. This is Dennis's. Aaron's is over here. That's Aaron Durda's stuff. Um, he's got a nice arbor for a horizontal mill. He's got a tool post grinder. He's got a lot of cool stuff. He's got the old tool post off of his uh, off of his Monarch. That's a genuine Alorus. It's just got a patina on it. He wanted new, so so that's a genuine Alorus. I think it's a size. Uh, I I always get the the C's mixed up. They got the C A and the C X A. I don't know what size that is. And uh, I'll give you two guesses whose stuff this is, but you're going to only need one. Monster straight edge. I need a couple Tylenol before I try to pick that one up. That's a big cast iron one. Um, in here, I don't know if I can open this or not. I want to tip over the other one. Yeah, that's a granite straight edge. So... Uh, if someone knows whose who's stuff this is, blurt it out. Throw it in the comments. I'm not sure what that is. There's a big LS Starrett box, I think, underneath here. Now look at the size of that box. Look what it says on it. Oh. Yeah, that's, a, that's it looks like a Starrett height gauge. See you later, Rusty. We'll call it closing rig with a rotary indexer. You know, you go to a hundred yard sales and garage sales, some flea markets, and you're only going to find maybe one of these pieces. When you come to the bash, there's uh, literally everything you're interested in. Some kind of force gauge. All right, well, if you guessed Tom Lipton, you guessed right. This is all Tom Lipton stuff. There's stair boxes, Michitoyo boxes, Brown and Sharp boxes. So this is a gauge. Oh, pin gauges. Little baby ones. Look at that, little tiny things. Wire gauge set. Cool. There's an old uh, Moore spinner motor gearbox. Uh, four jaw independent plus some little tiny collets. I think it uses the brown sharp type collets, spring loaded index or spring loaded tailstock. So it's a little a little tiny uh, OD spinner for your surface grinder, electric powered. Pretty cool. 
miscellaneous angle plates, toolmaker's vices. It's got a genuine decal sitting here, too. That's the real deal. Somebody custom painted it with a uh, kind of a metallic blue, bluish purple, kind of a cool color. And uh, I don't know what he's getting for it, but those things go for a pretty penny. It's a good looking little tool right there. This says Deckel SO Spares. Ooh, I got a Deckel. Let's see what's in here. Oh, he's got collets, got a brand new wheel, a drive belt, a rope drive belt. Yep, yeah, so he's got a few Deckel pieces to go with it. So all that's Lipton stuff. Super fun to poke through. Uh, Keith Rucker brought a little bit. He only wanted a half a table. So at, at Bash, we, we asked, you want a half table or a full table? Uh, Rucker asked for a half. So Rucker has to share with, uh, looks like Mark Bol Bollard. So uh, Rucker's got some nice pieces. His uh, micrometers get up pretty big. Uh, R. Stephen Lang, good morning. Uh, force gauge is a valve spring checker. Okay, well, you're checking force on valve springs. I was kind of right, right? Thanks, George. So, a little cute little arbor press, a little tiny thing. That's fun. I mean, Rucker's not getting a lot for this stuff. Five bucks. There's a tool post grinder for 25 bucks that you can totally go through and rebuild and start building your own little tool post grinder. You know, cool little vice, 35 bucks. So, you know, there's, there's just, the, the prices here are good. Good morning, MC Engineering. Uh, there's, uh, this is my table. It's an 8x24 mag. It took three men and a small boy to put this up here. Um, but uh, this had a bad cord. The cord was just shot. I kept the pecker head and kept the bolts and I ohmed it out. It's tapped right here. This is where the transformer inside or the windings are tapped inside. And then uh, I, check, I ohmed it out across here. Uh, everything checks out for a 240 volt. Uh, DC. I don't remember the wattage, but it matched the tag spot on. So that, that mag will fire if you give it 240 volt DC. Reverse polarity will push your parts off of there. It'll become an anti-magnet. But I kept, I made sure I kept the hole downs and the pecker head when I went to that place. So that's for sale. Uh, milling cutters is all I got left. Um, uh, Dudley Toolwright, which is uh, Robert Whitecamp, came over last Sunday, I think, and he picked some out for Max Grant. So he's got a, he's got a, we got a boat going over to Max Grant with a bunch of uh, milling cutters. Some of these are, you know, new old stock. And it's six by half by one. So that's a one inch arbor, a half inch wide, six inch diameter, and literally a brand new cutter. And I. I took all these out of the old crappy looking boxes and just laid them out so people could see them. And I got my big four way tool post uh, uh, for sale there. And then a smaller four way. And then I sold all my KDK number one stuff yesterday. This is all KDK number two and a KDK tool post. There's a little radius tangent dresser. Nice. Outside screwball. That's Chuck Bomarito. Good morning. Uh, there's a KLE bench center. And uh, everybody's uh, arch nemesis, the uh, drill doctor. And I don't have much on my table. I just wanted to... I sold a couple things yesterday. But there's other stuff. But I can't... I mean, I'm not going to uncover everybody's stuff. They're not here yet. They just throw a tarp on it and some clamps, and uh, that's the uh, uh, I mean, that's how they shut down for the night. I'm not sure whose stuff that is. 
That's interesting. That looks like a little tiny English wheel. If anyone knows what that is, it says uh, patented June 1922, additional patents pending. It says uh, Styles Herman Manufacturing Company, made in USA, St. Louis, Missouri. All right. Uh, it looks like a brass or a bronze lower wheel. You know, maybe a steel upper wheel. This lower wheel's got a little crest. So I just got to believe that's some type of uh, small uh, English wheel. It's got a heavy cast iron frame. In feet on the bottom. This wheel is crowned. This wheel is straight. You know, maybe it's for like copper rain gutters. Something like that. Uh, you could use a, just a miniature English wheel. Kind of a neat little unit. And just some old rusty junk. You know, a, a lot of times you need a tetanus shot just to come to the bash, you know, and we require it at the door. We want to see your, your shot card. We will see your shot card. So uh, we're going to we're gonna immunize you on the way in and make sure you've got your tetanus shot before you can touch anything in any of these boxes. You Okay, I'm putting you on camera. Fine. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> this is what I look like. <laughs> dude, dude, you... Yeah. You apparently haven't taken a shower yet. No. Have you, have you looked in a mirror this morning? I'm going to let everybody see me in my glory. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this, dude, this is an unofficial video. We're just goofing off. Go get some coffee. There's right. coffee down at the house. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, guys. All right. See ya. Okay, next up was uh, Friday, kind of late. Uh, I didn't really have any time to shoot much video. Uh, we did go on a, a little bit of a live test just to test the bandwidth and everything. Um, so we were just, everyone was just kind of sitting around chit-chatting. Day was pretty much over. And I got a chance to talk to a couple of folks. And uh, that was that was pretty cool. So uh, we got to see that and uh, talk to them. Some newcomers and some old familiar faces for you guys too. Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan. And we're, we're doing a quick... Uh, channel check com check mic check and video check if you can hear me if i'm five by five drop a comment down below we are monitoring comments during this uh me and my cameraman uh, are going to get up and walk around a little bit and talk to some people see what's going on and we're coming up towards the end of the day we had uh, it was a really busy day we weren't quite as prepared as we wanted to be we're using this as a live stream test um, check one, check two, and uh, drop a comment. There's about a 30 second delay between the time I say it and call for comments to the time you're able to see comments. There's a delay on my end, there's a delay on their end. So uh, we're here at Summer Bash. Summer Bash this year is brought to you by Bar Z Industrial. You can always visit Bar Z Industrial at barzindustrial.com. How are we looking, folks? Am I distorted? Am I too loud? Am I too close to the mic? All right, let's get them cruise around a little bit. I'm going to take some shortcuts. And I'm going to hold this open for my cameraman. All right, buddy, you're clear. And we are winding down for the day. We just got random people. There's Randos. randos. What's your name? Brendan Hilton. You having a good time? I'm having a great time, Stan. Is this your first year? It is. Well, what do you, what do you think of Bar Z? And what do you think of, uh, what do you think of the swap meet? Well, after that killer deal you gave me on that KDK, I'm your new best friend. <laughs> Amen. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in the swap meet. We're gonna go around and look at it. Why don't you pan around the table and look at these guys around here? Um, we don't need any other people hoarding in on the good deals, so just stay home. Well, no, they're not gonna come see you. Oh, okay. Most of these guys are deadbeats and they're just hanging out on the internet. Then they're not, not going to come out. There but might the, be good stuff tomorrow I want to buy. They're missing out, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You wanna, you, anything you want to tell all the people back uh, back out there in internet land about the summer bash? Yeah, it's pretty mint. There you go. If you didn't come to summer bash, you blew it. What about you? What's your name? 
What's that again? Matt. You having a good time? Yeah, I'm having a good time. First year? First first time, yeah. Okay, did you buy anything at the Swami? Uh, I left all my money at home. I bet, I bet you're bringing money tomorrow, right? Well, I mean, I could run to the ATM. Absolutely. You can. Hey, I think we should put in an ATM here. What do you think? Yeah, we could do it. Absolutely. All right. I'm just going to hand the mic to Keith. Who are you, sir? My, yeah. My name's Hector. <laughs> Hector P. Runtengrunt. <laughs> yeah, I'm having an awesome time. All right. Did you buy anything? Actually, I did, yes. Did you sell anything? I sold some stuff, too. All right, all right. I think I'm still in the hole, though. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, should put in an ATM machine? I think you should definitely have an ATM machine. All right, all right. Just don't tell our wives about that. You just did. <laughs> is, is your wife watching back home? No. Okay, well, that's good. You're safe. All right, we're going to go take a walk around the swap meet. Thanks, fellas. Uh, so next up, we had a guy from uh, Martin Precision Tool come out and show his uh, torque adapters. Um, these are for your ER collets, so that no matter who tightens the collet, it's always the same. So use a torque wrench, tighten your collets, and these torque adapters uh, uh, give you an accurate torque on them every time. So uh, he had some for sale, he was showing them off, and he uh, donated some to the, uh, to the raffle. So we, we appreciate him uh, bringing those out. Over here, we got a gentleman from Martin Precision Tool. Uh, would, you like, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your product? Sure. Hi, I'm Dustin, and uh, this is a torque wrench adapter system that we have. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, this is our torque wrench adapter system. So, this allows you to use an ER32. So, you can use like an ER16 uh, collet and torque it down with your torque wrench. So uh, normally systems like this cost three, four hundred dollars for the torque wrench, then you pay for the individual heads. Uh, here you just have to pay for uh, the adapter and then you can use it with your uh, standard torque wrench. Nice, so that's for ER32 and what's the other one? Uh, ER40, ER25, and ER16 we have two different variants for and uh, we're going to be offering some more sizes later in the year. Nice. And you donated a couple of these to the raffle. That was a last that was a last minute uh, addition and we sure appreciate that. And you know, if these were made in Australia, you know what they'd be missing? Or you know what you're missing? You know those guys put a bottle opener on everything. <laughs> I bet you could use that as a bottle opener if you needed to though. Yeah, it looks like you could, you know. Uh, thanks for showing this. Thanks for coming out to the bash. Um, are you planning on making other sizes later? Uh, yeah, we're going to offer some other sizes later. We're just going to research uh, what's the right ones. Um, on our YouTube channel, we also have some uh, machine rebuilding content because uh, I was doing machine rebuilding before doing this. I just needed to shift gears and do something a little different, but that's all. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Now, uh, you, you're going to say, why would I want to use a torque wrench on an ER call it? Repeatability. You... Um, you know, some guys are big and strong. I know they give you a some kind of a wrench or some kind of a spanner to close up your collets. Uh, somebody that's had a feel for wrenches is, you know, they're going to pull it in nice and tight, but you're going to give it to maybe someone that's younger or the field is going to change, and you're not ever going to have consistent readings. But with a torque wrench, young, old, experienced, non-experienced, you're always going to get the same torque. Torque is torque, and you want to keep your collets at a very specific torque. Uh, next up, we go and visit uh, Mr. Clark Easterling, and he was doing a casting class. Uh, he was at a disadvantage this year because he didn't bring, uh, he didn't really bring any sand, and I told, I told him I had casting sand, which it turned out to be uh, the wrong type, whatever, I'm not a casting guy, but he said it was the wrong type, so he, he went down to Home Depot and bought playground sand, and it was rough, and it was tough to work with. But they did have a couple successful casts, and uh, you got to, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of sand you use, you can still teach some of the basics. So this casting class was good, and uh, the people that were in there, uh, they really enjoyed themselves. So they got to cast with Clark. So that was uh, that was pretty cool, and we thank uh, Clark for bringing his, uh, 
this stuff out to uh, teach those folks. Hey, Clark. Thought I might catch you back here drinking beer. Just missed you. How'd your casting class go today? Well, it was, it was, it was good. It was good. It poor results for uh, the sand we were using, but poor results for the sand we were using. But it was, it, it was doable. We poured one more. We haven't pulled out of the sand yet, but um, and we're going to pour one just for ingots to get rid of this and the kiln and shut it down. So. So do you think uh, finer sand would have done you any any good? It would have helped. Okay. Um, the people that were in your class today, you, do you think they grasped the basics of molding sand and creating molds for pouring? Yes. As uh, a matter of fact, they just left to try it themselves. They're already building a kiln. Nice. <laughs> but d did you let them try to create their own molds? By the time their turn came around, they were gone. And the ones that are here that were there for that, uh, they don't want to do it. So I decided to go ahead and just ram up a, an ingot mold where we could get this shut down for today. Pour it off. Okay. All right. So that's the casting class at, at Bar Z today. Uh, I hope they found it interesting. I think they did. Um, these guys have. What, what would you do different next year? I don't know. Um, it's hard to say yet. I'm I'm gonna have a better plan and action for that for next year. I hope. Got it. I was with you when you when we had some casting in Florida, and we were trying to do it in a cast iron mold. Yeah, that didn't work. That was an experiment that uh, I didn't have time to proof out before we got to Florida, and it was a total disaster. Oh, okay. But you know that's. That's part of it. All right. Well, thanks for taking time to talk to us. Uh, I'm sorry the oven's so underpowered. That is a glass oven, by the way, for doing it. What they use that oven for is for slumping glass. If you don't know what slumping glass is, I'm not really clear on it either. But they put a plate in it and sprinkle little chips of glass on it, and they let the little chips of glass slump into the main work. That's it. One trick pony. That's all that thing does. And I turned it into a... A smelting furnace by changing the controller and hopping up the element as much as I could but I think I'm gonna feed that thing about another 500 watts cuz uh, you know what I got a 200 mile an hour speedometer on a Yugo if you'll stick around uh, when we get ready to pour this and get mold it's gonna be the top of it and see how a mold really feels how long is that gonna be or you're you're waiting on the Yugo? Yeah. Well, I'm a, uh, you know I'd like to do it while I'm still a young man, but we're gonna go around and interview the folks inside, and I don't know. Let's take a look. I gotta get the sand off. But uh, you're at 1,318 degrees and rising, and I for that I'd recommend a, a 1,350 target, and then about a 20 minute uh, heat soak. And pour it. That's that's just me as an oven man. That's not you as a foundry man. So this is uh, this is us trying to collaborate. I, I know what I think, and I know what I how I think ovens operate. And you know the metal. I'm just the source of the heat. All right, buddy. We're gonna go inside the shop and talk to a few people, and we'll swing back by, and maybe you'll be ready to pour. All right. Be careful. That is hot. This one right here, you can see the, the molten aluminum on this side, and I believe these are ingots right here that he's getting ready to getting ready to pour. Uh, those two there, so you're gonna. The, this is just gonna be two blocks of, uh, and those are cut up Toyota timing. You're gonna like it in here. It's air conditioned. Next up, we had a gear cutting class going uh, in tandem inside the shop. And I, I got a little bit of footage of it, not, not a whole lot. I, I stuck my head in there for about 10 minutes and uh, let Andrew uh, Prestridge talk about uh, the gear class and 
uh, the methods they were using and what we were doing on, we were actually using my milling machine back there. Uh, but uh, it, was, it was a good class, and one that attended uh, had good feedback on it. Currently zoomed in on a what tooth gear. I got Andrew Prestridge from Evolvent with me here today. Yeah, this is a 58 tooth gear. It's one module. The dividing head is set up and indexed one tooth gap at a time. It's a 90 to 1 gear ratio in the uh, dividing head. So the, that always makes you have to calculate a little bit of math to do the dividing head and come out with the right number of teeth so you don't have leftover, uh, you don't have a, either a big gap or a, or a, a blank that's not cut. Well, well the, the proof is in the last cut. Every, nothing else matters except the last cut. The suspense is all in the last cut for sure. Now they can, everyone that's out there can go to the Evolvent Design Com. There's lots of videos of gears on our YouTube channel, gears in our uh, Instagram channel on Village Hobber or EvolvingDesign.com and on our website. There's a lot of free calculators there as well. So a lot of support for beginning gear makers there. That's all free resource. That's for everybody to hop over some of these hurdles and make it easy because it's hard enough to do it to start with. Well, I tell you, uh, I, I, I always love seeing gears being made on equipment that everybody has. Most everybody's got a mill. Most everybody's got some kind of dividing head or, you know, th this is my personal dividing head that we're using. It's technically a super spacer with a, with where, where I bought the wheels and the indexing kit uh, separately from Vertex. Yeah, and it's, it's. It's what people do when they're, they're bootstrapping a shop, right? They're buying used equipment. Usually the gear is always what's broken in it, so how do I make my own gear? It's a natural skill you want to have for your shop. And people will come to you, and a lot of people need gears fixed in all sorts of stuff, clocks. Uh, what were you fixing the other day? I don't, I don't even know what it was. I, I, gear broke, stand fixed. Yeah, stand fixed. And uh, so... It's a, it's a great skill to have for your machine shop. You know, most everybody's got a lathe and a mill, and the mill is the first and easiest choice to, to run this method. These indexing heads are also just a, a great natural next step when you get a plain mill to increase its capabilities, have another axis on the table. So it's a big opener to all these other types of uh, parts you can make, round parts. Now, I notice you're using one of my expanding arbors. Not my favorite, but it works in this case, and I always appreciate that you have them here because there's an infinite set of uh, infinite set of gear blank holding tools here when we show up, and I appreciate that. Well, the trouble with those expanding arbors, they are notorious for just doing the slightest amount of slipping. That's not good on this setup, and the whole class has talked about it a bunch. Oh, yeah. And we I, we usually set this up. Now I never let anybody get hurt, and I never we never do anything dangerous, but. Before we turn it on, I always ask everybody, does this look like a good setup? And so initially we had the gear cutter turning the other way, and it was going to make the arbor come loose. Well, that's going to spin the nut spin the nut off. Yep. And so we talked about that, and I said, no, I don't think we want to do this setup. So these are the great the great learning things we can get, take of, care of here, so when you get to your shop, you're going to have success. Well, the thing is, with, with what we're doing here, you're cutting one gear at a time, right? Yeah, one, one space at a time, yeah. Well, those expanding arbors, if you put multiple parts on them, I can guarantee that one of those parts is going to be tight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So one at a time, onesies is good, is good for this. If you're, if you're going to do multiple gears, to me, I would, I would machine an arbor and leave the arbor slightly short. stack together very tightly if you're going to gang mill gears yes and if you're going to make a gear and do those types of things some parts just require the fixture and that becomes a project of its own that's really important you get concentric and round and and think through those geometries to make it so that'd be a lathe part right threaded arbor trim the arbor or grind it perfectly you know round and so there's just a, a ton of great fun skills to go through here and it's very powerful. This will be a really nice operational gear. It'll work. We're cutting it out of aluminum today because it's cheap and easy. Not a lot of cutting pressure. But you can lay this down on your, on your mill and cut one out of steel just fine. 
I wouldn't think twice about it, but if it was me doing it, I wouldn't be using that arbor. No, that's, it's okay. Yeah. This is a class, and it's probably good. I, I, until he's done with that gear. I could talk all day about gears. What else you want to know? Oh. This is a one-module gear, which there's. it's just a box of numbers. American gears are historically pitch, standard pitch gears. But most of the rest of the world works in metric, and that's a module system. So, unfortunately, pitch and module are inversely proportional. So, the, the numbers get a little messy, all right? But we're working with the module gear here. The math is slightly easier, but they both make the same kind of gears. There are standard cutters for pitch, and there's standard cutters for module. So, most of the stuff is available for pretty much anything you'd want to do out there. And these single row cutters, they're good for just a very specific tooth range. So if you want to make a 27 tooth gear, you got to buy the cutter that's good for 24 to 30. Next up, we had a, uh, some folks from the local community college, uh, Mount Sac, uh, that run the Mad Catter BattleBot, the 250 pound weight class BattleBot. And uh, you know, I, I've seen them a, a few times out of, out of BattleBots in Vegas when Lincoln Electric takes us out there. And uh, it was fun to see them come to the event, display their uh, fighting robot, and they brought it in uh, battle-worn condition, so you can see the battle damage. And boy, did it have it! So here's him talking about his battle bot a little bit. Well, we peeked under the tarp the other day. They weren't here. But how, good. We want to talk to you about your battle bot. We want to hand you a microphone and let you talk about your battle bot. Are you, Are you the one to do it, or we want to do it with Trenton? Trent's right here. Well, all right. Well, this is about your range, so get the mic in your face. I'm going to hand it over and let you all talk to each other. Cool. Thank you. So uh, this is Mad Catter, 250-pound combat robot. That's the weight limit. As far as specs go and requirements, um, we can't spin this more than a tip speed of 250 miles an hour. Uh, but besides that, it's largely open as far as designs go. We have a pretty basic four-wheel drive vertical spinner. So this disc spins pretty quick. And we use that to uh, hit opponents with. We got a little lifter here for lifting and manipulating opponents. And then we got little pontoons for helping us get under opponents so that we can drop them down easily on top of the weapon, manipulate them. Uh, I think top speed of this thing is like 13 or 16 miles an hour, somewhere in that yep, range. Yep. And we've got about uh, 15 horsepower on the drive, and then the weapon has 21 horsepower. It'll spin up to that 250 mile an hour tip speed in about two or three seconds. Um, we're running 60 volt electrical systems here. We've actually got three independent electrical systems for redundancy and um, survivability. And uh, things are looking pretty rough for wear here because this just came out of our last fight with a robot called Nana over at Proving Grounds uh, over in Vegas. Uh, BattleBots is now doing kind of a live show thing while the season's, uh, while we're out of season. So you can see the sense of things and how much damage or energy is getting transferred with these robots. All the steel on this robot is welded AR-400 or AR-500 steel. Um, so it's all kind of bulletproof, theoretically. Uh, but as you can see, it doesn't quite, you know, it's not completely indestructible. We got two-inch solid weapon here that's nearly been broken in half. Um, this is a welded plate steel construction with some S7 tips on there. And uh, lots of cracking all throughout the frame. Lots of chassis cracks. Um, our, oh, a little closer on the mic. You can see uh, this is our drive system here. Didn't quite hold up under the forces, uh, but we do the best we can to design for those conditions and uh, have a good time. Yeah, it's uh, really awesome. And I would also recommend, like, if you watch on TV and you enjoy it, go to the live event. It's a completely different experience. The sound, the whole arena, the floor shakes as the robots run and hit each other. And that's really the way this sport is best enjoyed. We are looking for sponsors. <laughs> uh, this is definitely a um, labor of love here. We all put in our time and our money to get this robot done, and oftentimes on a very short uh, time frame. 
just because of the nature of the show and production. Oftentimes you only get a couple months uh, to get stuff slapped together. But it's a good opportunity for folks who want to uh, contribute or potentially get their name out there. Um, we do have a lot of sponsorship or airtime opportunities for folks. And it doesn't always have to be money. Um, we do need help, you know, fabricating, machining, welding, um, materials, all sorts of stuff uh, to keep the bot going. Yeah, we, you know, we really appreciate the support we've got from our sponsors so far. Um, and, you know, we've been working at Mount Sac for a long time, but uh, as that moves on too, we need shop space, we need um, all that stuff. So all the support is appreciated and we hope, you know, we can show off your business to a new audience. Yeah, so uh, this is an example of what you, you know, a sponsorship would look like. And then, you know, we can also, you know, there's VIP passes to the event and, you know, just getting your name on the robot and getting to know more. Next up, we got the, the grand prize for the forge oil. It was a really nice Lincoln Electric welder, uh, ZT fabrication welding cart, the Harbor Freight box. Um, we went ahead and put it together here and a Lincoln gear pack. Uh, we thank the folks out of Lincoln Electric for their donation. We thank uh, Paul out of ZT Fab for his donation. And uh, we, we can't do these events without them. And uh, we sure appreciate those. Um, but here we're showing it off a little bit and just talking about what we're giving away. Harbor Freight side box with a ZT Fab kit. Go visit ZTFab at alacart.com. But the ZTFab cart converts that toolbox into a welding cart. It's capable of holding a welding bottle in the back. The, the, rear, the rear portion of the cart will take a tremendous amount of weight, so you can put a welding bottle back here uh, without damaging the actual toolbox. Safety chain, bottle bracket, aerosol can holders for your welding sprays. So the rear of the cart is very stout. Uh, from Lincoln Electric, they sent us a 211 power MIG. It's a nice little inverter machine, nice little MIG welder. You, you can use the toolbox for your welding consumables. We've got the Viking 1840 series welding hood. The Lincoln gear bag that comes complete with a jacket and a shirt. Welding gloves, safety glasses, all welding supplies, so you get a gear bag with it. Uh, the ZT Fab Kit gives you hangers for your cords. This is a beautiful package, and this is going to the winner of the Four Jaw Challenge. And stay tuned for that after lunch today for our winner of that. And who knows what Tom Lipton has up his sleeve for our finalists of that competition. Next up for grabs was a Precision Matthews uh, milling machine uh, on, a, on a stand uh, with a boring head and a set of collets. And uh, that was just a single ticket raffle pull. And uh, that was a standalone raffle. And uh, here I'm showing that off and uh, the prize we gave away there. So, uh, and congrats to the winner. We're going to announce the winner later in this video. Uh, it's, you know, it's already been delivered and everything, but. Uh, we do go ahead and call him live right after we pulled his ticket so that's always fun to do and, and if they answer the phone they're they're usually pretty surprised uh, you know people don't think they're ever going to win anything but uh, ever in their lives but uh, someone's got to win so pretty cool I, I get to see that I get to see a lot of winners you know but uh, if you're a, a player you know it's a once in a lifetime thing At some point, we need to get this out of here. There you go. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, this machine is uh, getting raffled off. For those of you that uh, bought milling machine raffle tickets, this is a single ticket pull, winner take all the marbles. This is a Precision Matthews PM 728 VT. It is a variable speed machine. It comes with its own platform and floor stand. It comes with a boring bar, a set of collets. 
It's got a nice little two-inch boring bar with with boring uh, with carbide boring bars. And uh, we're waiting for that raffle drum to get uh, filled up and brought up to us. And then we can pull the ticket for that. That's a beautiful set by Precision Matthews. Um, you can find them at qualitymachinetools.com, I believe. And we have a discount code for them, 5% off any purchase, which on a machine is substantial. It's uh, code Z24. Can't believe I remembered that. That's Z is in bar Z, 2024. So Z24, 5% off your order at, uh, at checkout. Okay, next up is a little more swap meet action. We're just kind of wandering around, looking at some stuff, talking to some people. Uh, got to talk to Razor about his uh, classic Mopars, which I'm, I'm a gearhead, and it all boils down to it. So, uh, yeah, we were able to talk to Razor Ray a little bit about his uh, two uh, challengers. Pretty nice, and uh, got to see some stuff on the, out on the swamming tables. Mr. Andrew Padaka came along and brought some stuff. Wow, look at that vice, hundred bucks. Made in Sweden. That's something else. This got sold already. That's a big Cincinnati. There's a dividing head, just like I showed you inside the shop. Are, is that Echo going to screw you up? Okay. Uh, Michitoyo comparator stand. He's got a bunch of comparator stands, a bunch of cube squares. Wow, he's got some nice stuff. There's an old Baldor motor, low RPM. That's 850 RPM, so that would be a six pole or eight pole motor. It's got a crowned uh, pulley on it for a flat belt. So Andrew brought all that stuff. Behind you here is Keith Rucker's stuff. It, it looks like it's dwindling. That doesn't look like you had as much in there as you had yesterday. Nice. Who's this? Oh, these these fellas? You got anything good? I remember seeing I'm looking at your candy here. Oh, it's all melted. You don't want to pass. I know. What back is this, Keith? No, oh, it's too small. Yeah, too small for me. I'm trying to figure out a way to get collets in that big monarch. That's a D6. Now, why are these wax coated? Have they been rebuilt or relapped or something? Yeah, they were, when they calibrated them, they, they put that on there when they calibrated them. Gotcha. So you're up one, two, no, no just these two? There's a zero to one, one to two. What is that? Three to four. There's a bunch of different sizes in here. Just whatever's whatever I have left over. What do you got in there? That's a film thickness tester for tech, like paint film. So if you need to check like powder coating thickness or something like that, you might need that. Okay. I'm into that. I actually, mine got stolen the last time my trailer got broken into. There you go. Well, you need that. So I actually do. What do you got here? That's a hole gauge. So I think they use this for checking aircraft rivets. So they would go in, have a stop there, and. Um, when you squeeze that, it pulls the little prongs together, and that opens it up. yeah, it opens like, it up. Like the little ball gauges. Yeah, and you would uh, you could calibrate it on that piece there, but it was for checking the holes for rivets on aircraft. This came out of the Lockheed plant. Yeah, but that's a one-trick pony, one size hole only. No, it does a range, but I mean they had it calibrated for a specific size, but it do, it does do a range of hole sizes. I'm not sure exactly what the range is, but it does do a range. It's a Fowler, and it's not bad. Yeah. There you go. Well, if you're in the area, come by and see Keith Rucker. I'm going to come back and look at that in a little while. Does that work? Known to work? Okay. Okay. Thanks, Keith. Well, let's see if there's anything else that we can't live without. What are you guys up to? I've got some Swiss drawer slides in the shop that I was looking to get rid of. Um, I'll show them to you later. Uh, this guy's not here yet. He's got interesting pieces. We're back to Lipton. Lipton's table's looking light. Just cool old gauges. Wouldn't serve any particular purpose, but just a cool old gauge. 
inches of mercury, not inches of water, inches of mercury. Skimmer. Hey, what are you guys up to? Anybody, anybody remember this guy? We're waiting for it. There it is. Does anybody remember this guy? Hey, what's going on, everyone? Razor here. How, when's the last time you posted to YouTube? Oh, man, let's talk, talk about that. That's embarrassing. Where do you hang out online? Uh, Facebook, pretty much. Grinder. No. No, stay away from those places. Uh, <laughs> I know about them, but I stay away from those places. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Well, uh, it's good to see you again. Thanks for coming down. He comes all the way down from uh, Petaluma, California to see us. Uh, he just bought not one, but two classic Mopars. Would you like to tell us the details of both of these cars? Uh, well, without getting uh, totally carried away. No, wait, 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 wait. You know I'm a Mopar guy, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dan's well, a big Mopar. We, we, we want you to get carried away. <laughs> well, I have a classic uh, two 1970 Challengers. Uh, one is an RT model. It has the big block in it, 383, which I'm going to change to a 440. And then my baby, my pride and joy, is my uh, 1970 TA Challenger. And that's got the TA motor in it. Yes, it does. Four, four bolt main. Yes, it does. Six pack. Six pack. W2 heads. W2 heads. 340. Uh, I know the drill. Yeah, pistol grip, four speed, rally dash, rally rims. Yeah, it's a nice setup. Is that a numbers match? It most certainly is. So it's worth a little bit of money. We got it. We're talking about a numbers matching Mopar. Yep, front to back, sheet metal, the whole nine yards. I wish I had a picture we could put it up on screen. <laughs> I bet you got one on your phone, don't you? Uh, I do, but uh, the phone's in the truck. Ah, oh, damn sorry. it. Sorry, guys. Uh, sorry, but uh, that's something very near and dear to my heart. Uh, is classic Mopars. I've been pretty horny for it myself. I literally have nowhere to build a car on this property. I know, right? Yeah, you're about jammed up down here. So. Well, you, in the shop. I mean, I, I got to have room for a rotisserie. Because every, every single thing that I find is just rotted to the gills. Yeah, that's pretty much true. So, well, have, you, have you looked into that AMD sheet metal? Oh, yeah. Uh, you AMD, know. and then, now, there's another one out there, too. I can't remember off the top of my head. But AMD seems to be the, the one everybody goes to. They... From what I've seen, that's the best fitting sheet metal for a reproduction. Yeah, that's what I've heard too. Yeah. So, anyway. So, anyways, enough gearhead. Let's get back to the shop yeah. work. All right. All right. Thanks for talking to us. All right, man. Can you get on that? If you guys are looking for a hard inch. Uh, this is Randy Richards. He wasn't going to bring the whole lathe down, but this lathe is for sale. It's beautiful. You can email Randy Richards. That's Randy Richard in the shop for more information about his hardinge. But it's a pretty beautiful machine. It's a DSM-59 for sale. You could probably pause the video and take a good look at that if you want to read some of the uh, specs on it. But get a hold of Randy Richard if you're uh, in the market for a hard inch lathe. We're still in the Tom Lipton zone. Oh, that's sold. It says Razor on it. I wonder what Razor bought. Oh, he bought a really nice height gauge. That's a pretty nice piece. But it's sold. Razor bought it, the guy I was just talking to. Oh, well. How's my cameraman doing? Doing good? All right. Still not sold, still not sold. <laughs> Dennis still isn't here. I, I called his name during a uh, raffle, so I know, I know he won something. Hey, hey, I just did a plug for you on your hard inch. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Well, I told everyone, I showed him the picture that you took, so. Yeah, for sale. <laughs> for sale. Uh, do you ever show that on the channel? Uh, yeah, yeah, I made all my scribes on it, and all the knockers were made on it and stuff. I really, I really love that knocker. I keep it on the, I'm next to my surface grinder. <laughs> yeah. 
I, you don't have two or th I gave you a couple of them. Yeah, I keep yeah, one by yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And one by the one by the surface grinder. So, uh, excellent tool. Excellent. Everybody taps up. Like for for bumping something around on the mag on the magnet, oh, yeah. just just tapping it in. Even a even a even a, t even a tenth. So, just a small adjustment. Oh, don't I know it? That's great. Even setting your vice, uh, you know, something in your vice tight on the mill. You know, if you need to tap it down, it, I use it a lot for that. Yeah, good times. I, I appreciate it, and I appreciate you coming down. Uh, so we plugged your uh, uh, lathe, lathe for sale. Yeah. So this is the man you're going to be talking yeah, to. Email me. Email me. Now, what's that email? RR in the shop at gmail.com. Okay, so uh, shoot Randy an email. Not only do you get to buy a lathe, but you get but you'll get to meet Randy Richard. Oh yeah, you get him. Yeah, yeah. I'll help you load it. <laughs> yeah, no problem there. Okay, and he will and he will take all your money. Yeah, yeah, every penny. <laughs> <laughs> and you're playing, you're playing Jeopardy later. Yes, playing Jeopardy. I have never played Jeopardy before. Have you ever? I did like five times on TV. Five whole times? Maybe, maybe not whole times, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you get it. You, your your answers need to be in the form of a question. Yeah, that's what I understand. Okay. Yeah, you know, like uh, like uh, uh, what? Oh shoot, what is or something? Right? What is such and such? Or yeah, yeah. yeah. Be, uh, essentially, they're saying they're giving you the an they're giving you the answers, and you have to give them the question. Yeah, yeah. and I'm not good at that. Yeah. Well, Alex Trebek used to really nail their. I mean, he he would hold their feet to the flame. I'm going to be the oldest contestant, and I think I really should get some type of handicap, like two seconds or something. You know, like it, you're you're you're, you're good. I'm I, I'm not I'm not your moderator on that. <laughs> You're going to have to take that up with Dale. We'll just see how tough they are. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I appreciate you talking to us. Are you having a good time? Oh, yeah. Good time at the bash. Hot. It's going to get hotter. It's still morning. It's still really early. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, it's, you know, people should come. Everybody's selling stuff and talking is, is just fun to do. So. Well, right, right now, the swap meet's all watered down. I mean, it, it was really jumping yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, was yesterday was all the good stuff. Yesterday was the day he had to be here, yeah. All right. Well, appreciate you talking to us. Tom's in the zone. You feel like talking on the mic for a while? Is that a no? You're, oh, look over there. Let's, let's take a look at that board over there. I, I think they're getting ready for Jeopardy. I think we might take a break. How much time do you need? 15 minutes to be ready? We got to round everybody up? All right. What time is it? We're going to start in 20? Okay, we're, we're going to take a break, and then uh, we're going to turn it over to Mr. Alex Trebek for a rousing game of Shop Jeopardy. You don't want to miss this. And next up, there was a, we, had a, we had a really good time playing Jeopardy. It may have looked unorganized, and some of the questions weren't great that we used chat GTP to do some of the questions so actually some of the questions we, th we completely threw out we may not have looked like we knew what we we're doing we never done it before but we sure had a good time so uh, rule number one of bar Z is always look cool rule number two of bar Z if you don't know what you're doing refer to rule number one so uh, pretty good time uh, playing Jeopardy and I think the contestants had a good time too. So, and you know, Dale, Dale did a good job of uh, Alex Trebekking for us. So it, it was a lot of fun. I think we're gonna keep that one. We're gonna do Jeopardy probably next year too. He, he's ready to go, Tom's ready. He's been studying. We have Keith Rucker and Randy Richards. Randy, Keith, come on up. Tom. Age. Okay. Who's the youngest? Do you want to give it over to you? 62. 62? 68. I'm the youngest. All right. <laughs> you got out of that one easy. Okay. <laughs> so now you guys are going to get to pick from the five different categories. We have machi uh, Masters of Machines, Back to the Grind, Measure Mania. Tom will love that one. Cut Above the Rest, Alloy Al Alchemy. So, uh, Keith. Pick a number, pick a category, pick a number. All right, Alex, how about uh, Masters of Machines for 200? 
Master's machine for 200. This machine rotates a circular tool to cut and carve material. Tom Lipton. To, okay, honesty is good. Okay. What is a lay? <laughs> Keith. What is a lay? A milling machine. You Correct. Can, you Rotates it's a circular, circular tool. Oh. It rotates the tool. See, I told you I was going to lose. Yeah. All right. <laughs> the milling machine, the tool goes okay, round so and round. Okay, so I'm going to ask you guys for help here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Since the little lights aren't lighting up and they all sound the same, you guys are going to have to help me and tell me who picks the button, hits the button first. All right. Keith, hold on, protocol. Actually, negative 200, right? Because he oh, right. really? Is right. that how the game goes? Uh, yes. I, I, My prediction is I lose. So to be clear, the tally at the moment is Tom zero, Randy negative 200, Keith 200. We we don't have the little score things. We next year. Next year. Next year we'll have a bigger budget. All right, Keith. What are we going for? Masters of Machines for 400, Alex. All right, let's find out what we got here. Stop on this to resize thin metal. Stop here. What is stop. The stop here? Oh, oh no, you do not get it. What did he say? He said you said stop share, and then you said what is a stop share? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, what is a stop share? <laughs> <laughs> it's the rules. Okay, Keith Rucker. Thanks for that. Keith answer. Rucker, this is amazing. You are up by. What are you up to? Six hundred. Six hundred dollars. Randy Richards zero. Two hundred. Oh, minus two hundred. Minus four hundred on Tom. Now hold on here, Tom. Tom. Now I'm trying to play this game as honest as possible. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. And yesterday we had a conversation about if somebody plays a joke on you, you have to be able to take it well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fine. Okay, okay. You guys all heard that. All right. Keith Rucker, what's your category? Masters of Machine for 600. Six. All right. Alex. 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 <laughs> this machine can make you anything except money. Keith Rucker. What is a shaper? Correct. The $600. <laughs> hey. Give Keith a round. He is taking it. All right, Keith. That's good. You're up. Man. Let's go for 800, Alex. 800. This makes a snack out of cutting sheet metal. Tom Lipton. Nibbler. Nibbler, correct. 800. Oh, what? Man. what is a nibbler? What is a nibbler? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Did that hurt or what? Tom, Tom, I tried. I tried to help you out with that. Well, I tried. Hurt, huh? Wait a second. Did he say Tom, shaper? Tom is down what by. Is a, what is a shaper? Okay. Tom, you're okay. down by a thousand know, right now. I know. He's way more literate than you and I. Yeah. You know, Tom. He's a scientist. I know. Tom, right. you'd be better if you just put that button down. <laughs> Retire the button. Oh, All right, let's find out. Okay, Keith Rucker. 4,000, Alec. Yeah, 4,000. This mechanically powered process to the drill. Oh, this is a mechanically powered process to right. a drill press. No, might make no, you feel no, you a little cranky. Right. It's a mechanically powered predecessor. Can you read Oh, thank you. I can't. <laughs> Tom, Tom Lipton. What is a post drill? No, not correct. What is a radio arm drill? No, okay. not correct. This is a thousand dollar question. So, okay. Are you going to take a risk? I'm, I'm. I have, I have, yeah, I have to. Okay. Nah. What is a brace? Correct. Oh, good one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> man, man. man. You know, you guys, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. there's a final Jeopardy question that you have to Ooh. be able to bet money with. Really? Okay. <laughs> we'll see. You have something to 
<laughs> okay, Keith, you're rocking and rolling this. Oh man, yeah, you're killing I'm drilling us. for oil right now. <laughs> killing, killing us. Measuring mania for 200. Uh oh, this could be a Tom Lipton category. I'm trying to give Tom an advantage here, you know. This handheld tool with a screw mechanism. What is a micrometer? Correct. <laughs> Oh, but he's still, still in the hall, but we'll, we'll make it look like you have money. I, I was down, how much, 1000 or $1,000 yeah, or what? <laughs> 2000 yeah. Oh! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. I understand. All right. The okay. rules were not clearly explained to us, but I'm not going to complain. Okay, so I get, to, I get to choose, right? Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Measuring mania for 1000 He's getting ready. These angled tools are used to transfer and measure angles accurately. Angle, what are angle blocks? Incorrect. Mm. Chat GPT. Transfer is a key word. Transfer is a key word there, Bob. Uh. That implies that the angle's already on it. Go ahead. What is a protractor? That's done. I had just come up with it too. Yeah. <laughs> Chappy T, I'm sorry. All right, Randy, you are on the board. No, protractor. Uh, no, no, you, I'm still you, minus 200. No, you weren't. No, no you were only 12. down. You should be oh, at a, minus what's, 200. Oh, you're at negative 200. All right. I'm doing better than How, is it, how do you guys think <laughs> this is going for these guys? <laughs> Now it's scary. These guys are educating us on YouTube. Oh so, uh, <laughs> Gee, okay. You Thanks, Alex. You get to choose. Randy Richard, let's pick a category. Oh, uh, oh boy. Uh, back to the grind for 200. Back to the grind for 200. This pattern is developed when side wheeling. Who got that first? Yeah, Tom? What is, what is crosshatch? Crosshatch it is. Hey, you're getting there. Oh my gosh, he <laughs> at this rate we're not gonna have to throw him in jail. Here we go. All right, Tom. Okay. Okay. Um, measuring mania for eight hundred. He's a brave man. Remember, they're supposed uh, to be harder on the bottom. Actually, I don't remember if they are or aren't, but uh, let's find out. This set of precision. What are gauge blocks? Correct. Yeah, he's in trouble, man. He's doing it. Speed he's doing here. it. You read faster than I can. Now, yeah, now I, I, will, I will tell you guys something. I did cheat on one of these with Tom. Tom was looking at me. He was going to say something. I'd go, what is, what is? So he did take the hint. So I, I did cheat, you guys, just to let you know. All right, then I get 200 off of mine, right? No, no. <laughs> My rules. My rules. <laughs> Okay, so you know who's up? I, my, okay, Tom. I'll give you my hundred bucks and I'll hit him in the head. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay Tom, let's go. Back to the grind for a thousand. Going brave, going big, or go home. This bench top grinder is used to make cutting. What? What is a decal grinder? SO, single lip grinder. Uh, we'll, we'll give it to him. We'll oh. give it to him. Yeah, but the answer could have been. I have one on my so. table, by the way, for sale. So. <laughs> with, with all the attachments and a wonderful price. Okay. Let's go this way. Tom needs to sell it after this game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tom, you're rolling. Let's make it happen. I don't know. What do you think, Randy? I, I'm, I'm curious about uh, alloy alchemy. Uh -huh. Al alloy yeah. alchemy for 1,000. Yeah. yeah. Oh, OK. Known for its exceptional strength and heat resistance, this nickel chromium, Tom. What is Inconel? Yes. yes. How many of you guys got that out there? Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, yeah I knew just it. We got a couple out there. I okay. Knew, I knew Tom so, was going to get it right. So. <laughs> Pro tip, put your hand over Okay, you guys. <laughs> yeah. We're going to give a round of applause to Tom. <laughs> he is even now. Give it to him. Oh. Woo. Yeah, I told you I was going to lose. Yeah. All right, Tom. No, it ain't over yet. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. What do you think, Randy? Cut what above do you think, the rest. Go see what that's about. Cut above the rest? Okay, cut see, above the rest for a thousand. See what it's about, at least, you know? Go oh, big or go, go home. Time. Yeah. 
this cutting method use a thermal electrical uh, thermal energy. What is a plasma cutter? No. No. Thermal uh, energy. Actually, let me make sure I'm not wrong. Instead of mechanical okay. force to remove material from a work fleet. Chat GPT. Oh, like a milling, uh, some kind of milling. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, what is an EDM machine? Correct. Yeah, good I came one. up with yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That yeah. was good. That it's, was good. It's, it's, weird, it's, it's weird, weird, worded weird. bad. Randy, okay. Randy, yeah. buddy. Okay. You're okay. at 800. Oh, right. You are right. in the positive. I'm losing. I'm losing. Oh, man. I but Tom. So at this. Okay. Uh, okay. So I, I should have got that again? one. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you own is, a similar machine. Okay. What is alloy alchemy for 600? 600? Yeah. Yeah. This versatile and strong alloy of iron, chromium, and nickel is a material widely used in the medical implant. What, what is... Stainless steel? Correct. You know, what kind of stainless? I know. Well, it doesn't. The perfect stainless. It's good stainless. How's that? Good stainless. <laughs> All right, Randy, you're doing it, buddy. Keith, Keith, we haven't heard from you in a while. It's your turn. I'm, I'm oh, kind of, you know, you started out strong. Bit, been a little bit. All right, yeah. Randy. What is alloy alchemy for four? What is? What is? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. A versatile and widely used alloy of iron. Carbon, known for its strength and affordability. What is cast iron? No. It has iron and carbon in it. Alloy. It does. Yeah. It says iron alloy, carbon, though. No for it. Well, I know, but he hasn't answered. <laughs> can, can you go twice? I don't think you go. Uh, uh, carbon. Affordability. Say it. What is tool steel? No. Can you oh, a carbon? particular alloy. Eh. All right. Okay, this is Chat GPT. Okay, we'll just pull this one off. What is steel? Oh, steel. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can we go? Can was that too simple, or can yeah. we go with that? Yeah. The question is lousy. All right. Yeah. The okay. Lousy. We're gonna we're gonna just. What do you guys say? Cancel that question. Yeah, it's, it says alloy. That's the, that's the trick. Yeah. Chat GPT, thank you. I get it, right? But I alloy, think they both, right? they both tried. They get minus. Yeah, I'll take they that. Both okay, I'll okay. Take that. I didn't try. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I got to have something about it. So favorite. nobody got it, so we'll give it to you, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Steel. 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 What alloy steel? Carbon yeah. steel. The perfect 440. Perfect. Oh, high carbon steel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, Randy. Go ahead and pick, bud. You're up. I mean, you could. Well, yeah, anyway. Oh, there we go. Yeah, answer the question. I, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm going to. It's easier. <laughs> it's easier if you remove the thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. But you have we to have, guess it before to, you, you know, remove it. Okay, cut so above guys, the rest for 400. Even though I'm not doing the rules very well, you do have to wait till the question is <laughs> no, answered. Right. It's still cut above the rest for 400. Cut above the rest for 400. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh, oh no. Daily double. Daily double. double. What's that mean? I gotta find out what does it mean. <laughs> I think that means you, you can you uh, get you get a double the money. You get the bet. Oh, you get a bet. Oh. Okay, you get a bet. How much am I up? How much so is he up? Oh, I didn't get the It was a four hundred dollar question, so now it's an eight hundred dollar question if he gets it right. No, you get to bet how much your money you want to put on. Oh, right. Yeah. How? I'll bet 200. How's okay, that? so you're going to get so you're going to bet 200. So Randy's going to bet 200 on the daily double. Oh, well, y'all get under the cut double. above the rest. Well, we all get the bet. This cutting method uses no. a high pressure steam <laughs> and water mixture with abrasive <laughs> Tom abrasive Lipton. water what, jet. What, what is an abrasive water, water jet, jet cutter? <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys going to give it to him? No. Are you giving no? up? <laughs> no. You, no. No, he said. No. Well, he was he was pounding on my head at the time. I think he's wrong. Okay, 
I think he's wrong. He got the right question, but did he say? My pressure is steam and water. No, but he said, what is a water jet first? It was all one sentence. That, and that's I question. Got it. Uh, you have to say, what is a water jet I first? Said, I did yeah, oh. yeah, but the, the, the okay. question is invalid because there's no steam involved. It's all water. Stream. Yeah. Stream. 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 Oh, it says, oh. Put your glasses on, Grandpa. <laughs> oh, okay, I can't read anyway. Okay, so yeah, let's go this water. way. Are we going to give it to Tom? Raise yeah. your hand. Thank you. I need it. Uh, Woo! I don't know what the points I'm are for that. Okay. In the whole big time. That's right. Oh, really? Yes, that's right. That's right. That's, that's right. That's right. You got it. And I got it. You got it. Yes, because he's pounding on my head over here. Yeah. Okay, so, all right. So I will never do this game show again, obviously, because I'm not good at it. Okay, the next question is going to go to Randy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, um, alchemy for 800. Bua Alpen, alchemy. Alloy alchemy for 800, Alex. Thank you. This alloy is primarily composed of copper and tin. What is brass? I hope that's right. No, that ain't right. Don't watch. Hold ain't on, right. hold on. That's right. It's not right. Yeah. No, no, no. What is tin? That is not what ChatGPT says. No, yeah. Bronze? Bronze? What is bronze? bronze. Correct. Yeah. Bronze. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, Randy, yeah. you just lost 800 yeah. points, Thanks. I'm sorry to say. Yeah. All right, Tom Lipton is up. We're going to see what he's going to do. What are you going to do, Tom? Pressure's on. Here we go. Back to the grind, 800. Back to the grind, 800. This grinding machine is branded as becoming synonymous with horizontal and circular grinding. Tom. What is a Blanchard grinder? Correct. Tom, you're kicking it now. Um, okay. Keith, Keith, buddy. I knew it. I just wasn't quick enough. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm from Georgia. You can, you so can, things are kind of slow in Georgia. They are. Yeah. It's wonderful there, but you can you have your hand, sweet tea have your hand on, <laughs> on the top. On the top. Okay, so what do we have for scores right now? Where are we at? Uh, we've got uh, Tom and Randy are tied. Tom and, Tom and Randy are tied at 600, and Keith is... Oh, Keith shit. is still winning at twenty six hundred dollars now. Uh, there's a game here. <laughs> he can play it safe and might win. Yeah, so right. uh, I don't think we got enough money left there. So uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> eighteen. Yeah. Well, there's win enough. There's no there's enough. <laughs> All right. Okay. Give it to us, Tom. Cut above the rest for eight hundred. Cut above the rest. This thermal cutting process is used oxygen jet to burn through metal. What is oxyacetylene cutting? Correct. Woo. Say it slow. All right, Tom, let's go for another category. Uh, measuring media for 600. Measuring media for 600. These adjustable tools are ideal for measuring the inner diameter of a hole. What is an inside micrometer? What is a telescoping gauge? What is a bore micrometer? You know, we're just pulling this one off because all those oh, are correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're all correct. Yeah, they're all correct. correct. I think was they meant caliper. telescoping gauge, right? That is like gauge. not the you ideal tool. That was a bad, yeah. okay. That is not the ideal I'm tool the to do that. I'm the telescoping gauge. Yeah. That was, that was chat GPT. See how I can blame everything on Google? That's my goal here. All right, Tom. Okay, so uh, let's get rid of measuring mania. We'll take measuring mania for 400. Oh, these L-shaped tools uh, with an engraved scale are used for accurately checking and marking angles or to verify the squareness and straightness of a line. Don't think too deep. Go ahead. What is that? Carpenter's square? No. Oh, come on. What is a machinist square? <laughs> no. L shaped tool. What is a scale? scale? I, I, we had down a uh, combination square. Co it said to accurately closeness. check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. 
I have a comeback for this. I have a comeback for this. You do woodworking also, don't you? I do. And what square do you use to check the accuracy of do your you word? Do you really want to know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, not what you they want to know. I use a machinist square. Yeah. So it only checks okay. one angle. Okay. Gotcha. We're going to pull that one. one angle. Well, combo square for 45. One angle. Two. Square. Well, I'm not square, sure right? if my, qu my answer was a good answer. I, no, it's a lousy question. It's yeah. a lousy question. Lousy you think question? it's valid? It's a lousy question. What is a combination square? Okay, they're saying a combination square is valid. Everybody loses 600 points. Oh, 400. Everybody. Okay, I am losing friends right now. That hurt. Really bad. All right, so. I don't know who's, who was the last one to speak. It was Keith. All right, Keith. All right, sure. Let's go with uh, cut above the rest for 600. Cut above the rest for 600. This process uses a sharp blade to separate sheet metal along a straight line. Keith Rucker. What is a shear? Correct. Woo! You're back up. Go Keith. <laughs> All right, Keith. Uh, back to the grind for 600. Back to the grind, 600. These items are used to use in beat. Ah. Go ahead. What is a grinding wheel hub? <laughs> Correct. All right. Back to the grind, 400. Back to the grind for 400. This tool shapes grinds. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> what is a diamond dresser? We'll give you that. Uh, I would say that's wrong. It was dressing wheel. He used the word dresser. It's, a it's not a wheel. You don't use a wheel to dress a wheel. This tool circular. shapes grinding oh, wheels. This tool shapes the wheels. So circular, the dresser shapes patterns. it, not the wheel. Yeah. He's, Dale's got yeah. one on Dale, his you're wrong. There. Tom, you're right. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Dale is wrong. <laughs> okay. Dale is at minus Alloy Alchemy yeah. 200. I'm minus quite a bit okay, today. Well, okay. Numbers. Tom, give us, uh, we got two more categories. Alloy two more left. Alchemy 200. 200. <laughs> These lightweight, oh, this lightweight corrosion resistant alloy is widely used in aircraft construction. What is aluminum? Correct. Oh, aluminium or something. Aluminium, yeah, right. <laughs> well, you have a titanium with a big, All right. big one. All right. Okay, so so let's find out where we are at. <laughs> we got one more. We have Tom at 1,000. 1,600. Oh, so, Tom, you're at 1,600. Yeah. What? Wow. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have Randy at 600 and Keith at 2,600. <laughs> wow. Okay, now the game is not over yet. <laughs> we have a chance for Tom to lose $200 yeah, right. right now. Pretty easy. Okay, Tom. Watch this. Hold my beer. Right. <laughs> this cutting process uses ionized gas steam to melt and vaporize go, go ahead. Yeah. What is plasma, plasma cutting? Correct. Yeah. All right, now we have, what is it, the Daily Jeopardy? The final Jeopardy question. Okay, this is what's going to happen here. I'm going to ask a question, and you guys are going to write down your answer. Tell us how much we got. you blow it big, okay? Is, is, is there some subtle message here, or what? <laughs> okay, so, so we got to write down our bet, right? You're going to have to write down how much you're willing to bet. Tom, you right now have. Oh, what do I got? 1800. Tom has 1800. Randy, you have. 600. 600. Keith has. Now, we have to talk about one thing here. This is very serious. This is a handmade knife. Actually, I'm going to have Jennifer read the, uh, do you want to read the, where's the sheet? So this handmade knife 
I will demonstrate while Jen reads the, uh, the details. Better than all. All in. Better. All in. Better. All, all in. in. There you go. Yeah, right. All in. No, nothing Beautifully <laughs> handcrafted, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Right, all in. Handcrafted by Mike Cowell. About myself, I am a retired engineer who enjoys working with my hands and learning new skills. About the knife, the design was drawn in Fusion 360. All metal parts were cut on a bandsaw, ground to final shape on a shop, on a shop-made 2x72 belt grinder, heat treated using a hot shot oven, yay, mm, hot shot, sanded and polished to a final finish. The sheath was handmade from leather in that my shop to complete boy. the knife. Very nice. Yeah. Perfect. Kind of slam. So uh, that is what they good. are betting for right now. Okay, just pretend. Just real quick. Doesn't take long. Be nice, okay? Be nice. <laughs> Be nice. Kids, we're, 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 we have to play nice here. <laughs> Sorry, fish food. <laughs> All right, so now i got to remember what the question is. Hold on. I want to make sure it was written down nowhere. Okay. For all the beans and the knife, do, do you guys have, have, have I'm a, you have, have to, to write get, down the I'm going to write the, oh. I'm going to give you the question. Yeah. You're going to be give it, then you write down the amount and your answer. Okay. And we will be doing the Jeopardy song again, yes? yes. All of us. All of us. I I had to write it down this first. tool is perfect no, for know. prying apart Thank and separating mind. materials. What's read the question again? This tool is perfect for prying apart and separating materials. Dun, 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 Okay, let's start out with the question again. This tool is perfect for prying apart and separating materials. Tom, how much did you bet? 1,800. What is a wedge? A wedge. Wrong. <laughs> All right, uh, Randy uh, Richard. I had to put in what is. What, what is a screwdriver? What is a screwdriver? Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Kate Rucker. And a wedge is wrong. <laughs> I, I bet it all. What is a screwdriver? Perfect. <laughs> Keith wins. <laughs> Woo! Right on. Did you bet it all? Yeah. You lost. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Keith, you win the what, knife. Even Congratulations. Yeah. A, a round of applause for these guys. Congratulations. <laughs> That's a Phillips head, though. That probably wouldn't work too well. Keith. Thank you. Enjoy the day. I think something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next up is uh, Four Jaw Championship, and uh, like I said, like you saw earlier, that uh, Lincoln Welder is up for grabs on the Four Jaw, and our judge this year was Tom Lipton, and every, you know every time we do a different judge, it's they're the judge. It's their rules. This time. During the preliminaries, uh, he gave them a set amount of time, and as we got closer to the finals, that time shortened up. And so when when, they, when it all boiled down to it, I think they squeezed them all the way down to like 45 seconds. And then, you know, no one's gonna dial anything in that quick. And uh, then all of a sudden, it's down to who's the closest, accuracy-wise. Uh, and then he threw a curveball at him at the last second to the final contestants. He let him get all set up. Then he made him switch sides. And now you're, you're no longer using a left-handed lathe. Now you're using a right-handed lathe. And so your chuck's on the opposite side of what you're used to dealing with. And you got to use your chuck key with the opposite hand. And your indicators, everything's backwards. So he, he mirror imaged the whole thing for both contestants right at the last second without telling him that. So uh, what a great judge and a lot of a lot of fun. So here's all the heats all the way through, uh, all the way up to the final. Uh, if there's a tie, closest, uh, close, best accuracy. Um, so there'll be a time limit to limit the, the whole length of the thing. I'll be the judge of the accuracy. 
and uh, the theme is your dick of a boss, okay? So uh, you'll, you'll understand in a minute. So, <laughs> so who's our first, uh, first folks here? First up, Kyle Luker and Andres Ventura. Kyle, I see that you've indicated you're here. Andres, you've got 60 seconds to get over here. If not, Tommy Thomas is taking your place. So come, yeah. Kyle Luker, Andres Ventura, your time starts now. Let's get to the Fort Jaw. Uh, we can get Denny to come do the Jeopardy theme again. Kyle Luker, Andres Ventura. All right. Andres, we've got Andres. How about Tommy Thomas? Come on over, Tommy. You're going to be on deck. You might be taking. Uh, oh, never mind. A brief amount of time to get the indicators the way you want them, okay? Uh, you can't put anything in yet, but get the indicators set kind of the way you want. And then I'll call go, and uh, we'll go from there, okay? Get the timer going here. Stopwatch. All right, for those of you watching at home, the contestants are deciding where to put their dial indicators. Something. Well, are you happy with your indicators? Yeah. You are? Ready, set, proceed. The reason the indicator position matters is it, it will determine which direction you're going to turn your chuck key. And these people are going to decide really quick whether it's a good position or not. For those of you at home, I bet you've already made your decision. One of them knows what they're doing. That is all. <laughs> it looks like a monkey with an hey, indicator. Be the monkey, not the football. <laughs> Are you? You're thinking like a, one of those trained apes, minus the training. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So is this where Dick Boss Come comes on, in? Man. Get that in there. We don't have all day for this. <laughs> Some people, you know. I, I'm not going there because we're on camera, but some people are more experienced than others. Part, not by the hour, okay? So these guys are getting paid. <laughs> not <in> my shop. <laughs> All right, he's pretty close. Eyeballing there. Yeah, I'm really surprised or impressed. Quick reminder for the contestants that it just needs to be centered. It does not need to be tight. That's true. You don't, it doesn't have to be turning tight. Just, uh, um, just snug so it won't fall out. Come on. God, the customer's waiting for this. Jeez. You know, uh, if we can get the camera on those gauges, you're going to see these things spin like a Tesla going from zero to 60. It's not too bad. It was helicoptering around before. I thought it might take off, clear off the, the lathe, but no, it did pretty good. Less than a minute left. Less than a minute left. Come on, get off the horse here. Come on. Real quick. Just real quick. You said horse, H-O-R-S-E, right? Yeah. I, I, you know, I, heard, four legs? I heard something similar that doesn't spell that way. Got it. Put your key down and step away, and we'll call time. Oh, you can use up the whole three minutes if you want. Whoever's closest wins. Just use up the whole three minutes. Get it as close as you damn well can, and be quick about it. Ten seconds. Okay. All right. Key down, time to judge. Let's see what we got. That is less than a thou. Nice job. 
And that's a high compliment, by the way. So, all right, let's see what you got. That really is a high compliment since these trucks aren't within a thou. Tom built them. Right. All right, you're up by a mile. So, uh, okay, we have a winner. Woo! All right, congratulations. You both did a great job. All right, Glenn's almost got his part indicated. And Trent is very, very cleverly just got his indicator located. So that's very good, buddy. I'm proud of you. All right, come on, boys. Time's a waste in here. You have about one minute into the competition, two minutes remaining, but absolutely no pressure from us. We just want you guys to do it as slow as you possibly can because it's not 100 degrees and there aren't 300 people watching you waiting to go home. So no pressure. Oh, uh-oh. Somebody's spinning fast over there. Watch out. Okay. Come on, Glenn. Come on, Glenn. Come on, Glenn. You're almost there. Oh, the youngster. Wow, 124. Let's see what we got. Wow. One minute and 24 seconds. That's not a lot of time. We'll take that. All right, let me... No, 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 no. Turning it slow just to give him a, a give him a fair shake. Okay, I got two thou on this one. Where you Excuse me. <laughs> All right, good try. Emily Adams is here. Peter Francesco. Thanks, sir. Right on. Uh oh, watch out. This guy slayed me. Okay, so uh, yeah. So uh, get your indicator set the way you want. You have the free I've been time to. Practicing it too. Okay. Okay. So uh, I, I noticed somebody indicated on the on the rough surface. So my recommendation is indicate on the smooth surface if you have a choice. Okay. But he did fine on it. But uh, okay, you guys ready? Okay. You got three minutes. Rock and roll. There's a lot of different techniques our competitors can take. Some of them try to eyeball it in. Some of them try to use fine metrology instruments. Some of them have no idea what fine metrology instruments are. You never know until you see them get going. But the important thing is they're playing. And the winners of this year's competition get, it appears to be a complete welding package. Is that what the prize is? I, I don't know what the prize is. It, so. It's either that or the Charles Mill. I think that might be the prize. We'll have to get Stan to tell us. But there's always always a good prize i don't know what first place is but this is the second place prize so there's a lot a lot on the line folks this big fat stack right here goes to the second place winner are you sure yeah i brought it myself this Yeah. Money, yeah. Okay. yeah, it's movie money. <laughs> oh, Emily's cranking. Emily's cranking. Peter's cranking. We've got a we've got a race here, folks. We're a minute and twenty seconds in. With a minute and forty seconds to go. That's the way time works when you add up to three minutes. Tighten your highs, slacken your lows. Come on, anybody can do it. Here's my, my useful bit of information is you do not want that indicator to move, so whatever you can do to keep it from moving, well, I mean, don't like smash it or anything. Are you calling it? Okay. Are you calling it? Okay. All right, minute 48. Let's see what we got here. Don't even look. I'm going to look. It's a banana. I'm going to look. Oh, my God. I've done better before. Leave. <laughs> Emily, eyeball it first. Let's see what we got here. You did good. good. Thanks for playing. That's what we call PFG. Okay? It's about a thou. Good work. Excellent work. All right. Dan Strittmatter and Nick Carter are up next. Get your indicators set the way you like them. Okay. And take your time and get them, get them lined up the way you want. And then when I say go, then you can grab your uh, objects and your truck keys and go to town. You ready? 
You both ready? Okay, begin. All right, Nick's got his indicator horizontal and Dan has his vertical. Different techniques, we're gonna find out which one's best in less than 170 seconds. Uh, it's too late to cut it down to two. Maybe when we get to the uh, final elimination, we'll make it two minutes. Yeah. Uh, I gotta save much time. Are we? Come on, get it in there. What the heck, man? Jeez. Maybe he wants to romance it first. All that fussing around and you couldn't get it in there. Take it to dinner, buy it a few drinks. I don't know. <sighs> Oh my God. Um, I don't know if the camera can see this. It's probably best if they don't. see that from uh, the Hubble, okay? So. <laughs> okay. Pay attention to what you need. Oh, you went the wrong way on that one. We're one minute, 10 seconds in. Tighten your highs, slacken your lows. Get it centered. That's the best advice I can give you. You're going to want that thing coaxially indicated right in the middle there. Kind of going. For anybody out there in the YouTube audience at home wondering why this is so difficult, it's because you got a couple of jerks that are sitting over your shoulder making jokes about you while you do it. You know, the way I look at this is no worse than your first day at work, right? Because the whole shop's watching you, right? And uh, <laughs> a lot of experience with that long. Yeah. Let's go to Denny, the color com commentator of this competition. Denny, as color commentator, who do you think's dressed better? What do you mean by color commentator? You don't have to know. So like in sports, there's usually somebody who knows all about the, the, uh, the action that's on the field and somebody who knows all about the players. So we're pretending you're the guy who knows all about okay. the players. Here we go. All right. For one thing, we have Tom Lipton judging the competition. There's no way I'm going to trust John, Tom to do this correctly. That's my rule. Don't trust Tom. Good rule. All right. Let's see how we did. Yeah, I'm going to call that less than one. Nice that needle's not moving. Nice job. Now I gotta go over here. Can I move the time? Let's look at this disaster. Oh, actually, you got it. Okay. You, oh, you started getting it. You started getting it. Huh? We almost shamed you into, into getting it right, huh? So, all right. Well, nice try. So about four? Our winner here? Less than one and about four. You were almost there. Another 30 seconds, you would have had it. Yeah, maybe 10. Yeah. Okay. You guys ready? Okay. Be in. It's a difficult competition. Everyone's watching you. Nothing but pressure. If you win, if you win, you get stuff. If you lose, you don't. That was good. Good advice. So it's looking like. Okay. All right. We're about 30 seconds in, and we've got we've got someone who's close. Uh oh. Uh oh. How many beers he had? Two. Two. Well, one. He's in the zone. Let's find. <laughs> let's even things up. What's your favorite beer? The cold kind. The cold kind. You know the problem with cold beers? What's the problem with cold beers? They're really good, and you just want another one. I don't know what the joke was, but tell you what, tell it again, and this time we'll know to laugh. <laughs> now we're. Oh, 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 that was party foul. That was me. That was me. That was horrible. I just, for anybody at home, yeah, I went to go do the thing with the microphone, and I nailed the indicator on the way back. We should do it to the other guy, just to even it up. I think there should be some electric shock treatment. Yeah, well. <laughs> okay. 
All right, we're getting close. What time are we? A minute 45. Oh, we've got it. A minute 46. Let's check them. Let's check them. That was entirely unintentional. I'm so sorry. I don't care. Okay, I'm really I'm sorry. Everything else I did was intentional, but touching the indicator, not so much. One on this one? No, I'm not even close. Be one. Rear. Get take off. Is it taking off? Is it taking off? No, but you, the goal was to make an offset, right? Yeah. Oh, well, there's it. All right. Mr. Anderson advances to round two. Greg France and Brendan Hilton are up next. Dale Derry and Don Huseman are on deck. This is one of the people who hasn't responded yet. Okay. So this might be you. We'll give them like 30 seconds, okay? okay. If not, we'll figure out what we're doing. Okay. All right. We are currently looking for Greg France and Brendan Hilton. We've got about another 30 seconds, and then we're subbing in Tommy Thomas. Last call, Greg France. All right, going once, going twice. Tommy, Tom, Thomas, you are up, sir. Thank you for your patience. Okay, all right, gentlemen. Get your uh, indicators the way you kind of want them for the competition. Get them oriented uh, the way you like them. And as a favor to you, I'm not going to be putting the microphone in your face. Not because of that, but because it's a long microphone and I might nail the indicator on the way back. So. Happy with those arrangements? I'm happy. Okay. You ready? Get set. Begin. Well, I mean, those aren't the choices Tom and I would make, but you do you. <laughs> Interesting little bit of information. He works for Boeing. Oh, really? Yikes. He, oh, he's the guy that puts the doors on? Yeah, he's oh, the door guy. He's the door guy. <laughs> you always wondered where those bolts went. No coaching you. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> what, what are you doing rotating the dial? You're not even close yet. Jeez. She's in a microscope here, so. Uh. Yeah. Okay. In the current heat, we have Tommy Thomas against Brendan Hilton. Up next is Del Derry and Don Huseman. Under Tom's close eye, the competitors are working hard. They're getting close. Less than a rev. A less than a rev. That's good because before I thought the, the little needle was going to fall off with the centrifugal force. All right, let's hear from the crowd. Who's your favorite competitor so far? What's that? You don't know what the names of anybody? Uh -oh. Fair, that's fair. That guy in overalls. That, you guys like the guy in overalls who works at Boeing's and drops bolts out of doors? <laughs> Listen to all that applause. Oh my gosh, they love you, man. <laughs> How much time's left, Tom? Oh, come on, babe, I have Come on, get on it. 40 seconds. The pressure is immense. It's not just I mean, as she sets the bar pretty low, but not just his wife. <laughs> your kid, your kids, your kid's gonna cry. Okay, so. 
Well, with indicating like that, perhaps he should, Tom. Perhaps he should. Time is a ticking. We have 10 seconds. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Check, he's down. Let's see who made it. Thank you for jumping. Of course. Yeah. Whoa. We are probably a quarter of an inch out. We call this an eccentric in the industry. Sometimes you do that on purpose, you know, if you're making like an engine can. Not bad. Not bad for, this is railroad grade here. <laughs> it definitely is. So we got about four, 4,000, something like that. All right, thanks, gentlemen. Good jobs. Good job. Good job. Okay, begin. All right, our competitors have a long history in the machine shop. Faster than that, okay? I'm 80 years old, I don't move fast. That's not an excuse. It's a personal problem. Oh, Dale's got three, three jaws out. Four jaws out, he's got a piece in. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, Don's got his Don's got his third jaw out. His fourth jaw. Yeah, just try to hold it on center and bring the jaws up to it. I think Dale got a little excited about unwinding. Look at your, look at your jaws to the chuck body. To get close. Wasn't he the guy who yelled at you for coaching? Yeah, he did. You're still helping okay. him. Uh, You're a good man, Tom. Dale's okay. No, you really are. Okay. I don't care. Oh, 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 that was a good spin. I, oh, that was bad. That wasn't that bad. Come on, John. Get with the program here. Look at this jaw. What are you doing there, man? Good grief, man. Reel that thing in there. Come on. Just reel it in there. I'm hitting my indicator. Well, put it where it's not hitting. Spin that sucker. Oh, dear God. Dale, you were closer than that a minute ago. I don't know how you guys do this with the indicator on the back side, man. Jesus. I think the opposite of tight, tighten your highs. So you're going to tighten your lows, slacken your... A lot of glare. You have not seen glare. I can glare. Let's both, Let's both glare. They call me Mr. Un in unapproachable. That's not the same deal I was just talking about. Come on, Don. Stick that thing I in there. I know. I'm choking on Push it up in the chuck. Don, come on now. Two minutes. Don, let's go. Two minutes. 60 seconds remaining. Hey, it was a three job. Three plus one. Ooh, Dale's looking pretty good now. He's within a rev. Don, I know. Don. Don. Don put Don. his chuck key down. Does that mean he's done? Good grief. Don might want to indicate on the smooth part of the part. Uh, at this point, at this point, I don't know. With 20 know. seconds remaining. This thing is so jumpy. Excuses, excuses. It's a poor craftsman that blames Tom's parts. That's all I'm saying. You're there. Okay. Call the ball. Five seconds left. You're done. All right. With three minutes, Don managed to get the part into the chuck. We're excited. God, look at, look at that. I can't even. Jeez. Thou. So uh, I'm gonna Dale's less than the thou. Your indicator's not even touching. Which means it's not moving. Yeah, it's brilliant. That's a good tint. Out. Okay. Dale, thank you. You're the winner. Yay, Dale! Woo! All right, our competitors here. This is our last heat in the first round. Next up. Kyle Luker and Trent Wilson. Kyle Luker and Trent Wilson on deck. Okay. 
these guys are moving quickly. Looks like they both have some experience. Aaron Johnson is a engine, an engine machinist specializing in eccentric cams. And Jeff has an indicator that spins. So you at least know where you are. Okay. All right. For those of you at home wondering the temperature, inside the shed right now, we're at least at 100 degrees. We find that our participate, participants do well when they've sweated all of their extra body water out. Yeah, uh, roughly equal skill level here, or experience level. Is that an insult, Tom? Thinly veiled, yes. I like it. Both these guys, both of these guys are in the game. Different games, but both of them are in it. Two minutes down, one minute, one minute remaining. The good news is, unlike the last heat, the indicator is touching the part in, in this one. One of the ways you can cheat is just have your indicator just slightly off so it never moves, but... We're on to that one. Thirty seconds remaining. Three zero seconds remaining. Three zero seconds, yeah. You're in trouble, buddy. You're in big trouble. Big fat trouble. Fifteen seconds. Yeah. Woo. I don't think more jaws would be, be helping you out in this particular case. Do you, are you used to self-centering? Self, times, times down. Okay, nice. Nicely done. Uh, I'm going to call that two. A wiggly two. Okay, congratulations. All right, good job, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Our competitors are under a great deal of pressure now as they only have 90 seconds to compete. 90 seconds isn't a lot of time. I mean, I can feel it telling stupid jokes, of course, um, or digging through and seeing what's a good drink. Here you go. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Oh, for me? Oh, you're so nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. We are, we're moving fast. How much time's down? 30, 30 seconds, seconds down. in, 60 seconds remaining. Whoever has the best indicated, the tightest well, indicated part like is going to win. And the person who doesn't is going to lose. That's just the way life works. They can't all be winners. Any useful advice for our competitors, Tom? No. I think these guys are, uh, they're, they're playing hard here, so. Uh. Play hard, win hard, or play hard, get hurt, and go to the ER. It is kind of hot today. Okay, one minute down, 30 seconds left. Keep cracking. <laughs> 10, I'm sorry, 15 seconds remaining. Ten seconds remaining. Four, three, two, one. Keys down. Hands up. All right. Let's see what we got here. Okay, you're honing in, but not there yet. All right. Nice try. Oh shit. Oh, okay. I gotta pay attention here. So. Uh. <laughs> And 
20. Shit. Okay, hold up here. Hold up, boys. <laughs> We're splitting okay. hairs. Ro yeah, it just rotated to zero. Splitting hairs here. This is mildly interesting. Twenty, thirty, forty. Is it okay? Yeah, these gauges, uh, these uh, indicators are just goofy increments, huh? Mm -hmm. So currently, Tom is doing math. Um, we could be yeah. here a little while. We got a winner over here, uh, 17,000. Congratulations. You both really close to one another. other. It really did. <laughs> <laughs> what was your name, sir? Kyle Luker. Kyle Lukers, the winner. Good job, Good both job. of you. Right. Thank you for playing. We appreciate right. you. Begin. These guys are fast. They've already got the keys in the truck. Stan, did you come to watch? Uh, yeah, I came to watch, and I came to um, offer an observation. We're watching on a monitor over there, and I, I, I just watched a contestant uh, slip him some money, and he put it in his shirt pocket. Just saying. Yeah, no, I saw that, too. I was asking where, was, where mine was. Yeah. Are they are they greasing the officials over here? Not nearly enough, Stan. Not nearly enough. Okay, how can we how can we squeeze some more money out of this event? That's a great question, Stan. Why don't we start telling people about what they're going to win at this competition? First place. Well, let's let's start with first place. First place is a uh, Power Mig 211 by Lincoln Electric, with a ZT Fab uh, welding cart uh, built on a Harbor Freight box with a full Lincoln gear pack. Hood, gloves, jacket, uh, full gear pack. Just a beautiful package. Retail value, I'm going to say it's above $3,000 for that whole, whole rig over there. Wouldn't you say that's Oh, right? God, that's a beautiful, brand new, easily $3,000. No question. And uh, what, what is this I'm holding for second? Well, for second place, I decided to bring the second place winner a stack, a fat stack. Something they can just really take and just play with. Something they can have fun with. Right. So that's what we got right here. It's shrink wrapped. They get everything in here to take home and do with as they please. Awesome. And you know, you officials uh, should encourage more uh, greasing from the from the uh, contestants. You know, you slip a twenty or a fifty under the table, right by the four jaw. I'm, I'll allow it. Hey, I like it. I appreciate it, Stan. I appreciate it. All right, how are we looking, Tom? Ooh. So we got three over here. Three? That was really respectable, Nick. Good job. Thank you, yeah. Just about that. One. Yeah, one. Nice job. Nice job, guys. The difference on the last one was they were like 20, oh, what was it, 25 and 27 or 30 or something. So to one to three is really respectable. Great work. Great work. All right, so the winner there was Peter Francesco. I am looking for Ed Anderson and Brendan Hilton. Turn some knobs in their time. 90 seconds on the clock goes awful fast when you're under our careful, our careful watchful eyes. Looking for cheating. Mostly we're looking for people that are willing to bribe us. But, you know, cheating too. Okay. How do we feel about cheating, Tom? Do we care? I totally approve. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. I'm How the laziest guy. He finds the easiest way to get something done. How would you do this, Tom? I'd have somebody else, somebody do, else it. do it. That's smart, Tom. I like it. <laughs> you know, maybe later we can play Chuck Key. It's a little game where we teach them why they call it oh. Chuck. Chuck. Oh, we were supposed to do the coin toss, but Dale Terry's up next. We'll do the, we'll do the coin toss with him. 60 seconds have elapsed. The contestants have 30 seconds remaining. 30 seconds left. Oh, my God, you're going the wrong way, man. <laughs> Tom's really... Just do the opposite of what you're doing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Brendan, I know I was joking about you working for, for Boeing before, but now I really need to know. Do you? 
He is a Boeing engineer. It's because you won't let me turn the dial, Tom. Right. I won't let you turn the dial? It's screwing you up, huh? Yeah, it is. That, that pointer not being there? Oh, my God. <laughs> it is. Why it's the engineer in him, right? <laughs> <laughs> I almost forgot to look at the clock here. We're getting close. Oh, done. 147. Nice. Let's say how was last time. 15 over. So I did miss the clock. We did miss the clock. That's, that's what ten bowl, $10 buys you, folks. The extra 15 seconds you need to win. Nice job. We got a thou over here. But it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, it was spinning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was. It was full rotation. So good job, sir. Thank you, sir. Good job, Mr. Anderson. Well done. Well deserved win. Okay. Begin. Our competitors, experts, both. They're gonna get there. Chuck's opened up, and we're going to get going. Uh, Kyle Luker and Peter Francisco, you're on deck. Kyle Luker and Peter Francisco, you're on deck. For the, I'm sorry, I didn't have the microphone in front of Dale. Uh, he was just saying, the pressure's on, the pressure's on. Kind of like the fly, Jeff Goldblum and the fly. That's uh. Being Tom. Close race. Oh. Really close. It's really close. I think I'm going to require you to define close, Tom. Well, you know, when you talk about distances between planets and things like that, yeah, astronomical right. units. That's right. One end. One minute down. Yeah, you know, yeah. these are astronomical distances that we're dealing with here. There, we really don't need a thousandth indicator. No. Uh oh. Dale's. <laughs> 15 <laughs> seconds remaining. Approximately 10 seconds remaining. Move it steady. Please, please. I'll give you 10 bucks if you beat Dale, okay? I'm trying. Time. Oh, time. Oh. Oh. I was getting uh, excited. I was watching that time. <laughs> I, was, I was getting excited. Not, not good, but I might, oh, shit. I might have gotten lucky at the last part. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, I got, 60, I five, <laughs> 65. <laughs> See, look at that. That's like a tap. going back and forth right there. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, well, you have to rotate the whole thing, Tom. 360 degrees, buddy. Yeah, that was about yeah. what we saw over there, Dale. Well, uh, yeah, 360, 360 degrees, degrees out. Good job. Good job, Jeff. Appreciate it. All right, thanks for playing, guys. <laughs> All right. That was a fun one. Dale Derry and Jeff Morris. Jeff Morris came out on top. Go. <laughs> 15 seconds. No, these guys, it's okay. We'll just measure the offsets. You're going to have to do math, Tom. No, it's not that hard. We're 30, 30 seconds. seconds in. Competitors are fast and furious. There's no way they're getting it within a thou. It's just going to be whoever's closest. Five seconds remaining. Three, two, one. Keys down. That was that was pretty fast. That was a little fast. Are you? Okay. Let's see what we got here. All right. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty. 45. I don't want to shake oh, your hand. Oh, that was nice job, Peter. Nice job. Right. I got to say, I am impressed. Ready, set, go. With 45 seconds on the clock, 
the stress is immeasurable. Good, good kid technique. He's doing opposite jaws instead of all as he goes around. Oh, a little more, a little more, a little more. Oh, keep track, keep track. Nope, nope, right. <laughs> Tom, full of helpful advice for our competitors. See, this is why we always recommend that you bribe the judges at the four jaw competition. Uh, so we can keep, I mean, if you get, if somebody give me money, I just hold the microphone away from Tom. I would save you a lot of headache, just saying. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. It goes fast. All right, let's see what we got here. Not even far. Shit. I got lucky. Yeah. Thank you. That was a pleasure. That's actually pretty good, though, for that, that quick, right? Okay. So it's, it's those little things like that. Like I said, getting the jaws really close to start with, and it makes a big difference, okay? Nicely done. Thanks. Okay. You happy? I'm, I'm happy, Tom. Are you happy? Okay. Yeah, are you happy? Okay. Now you move over here. Yeah. <laughs> and you move over here. Can we move the indicators? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And we're going to do a minute and a half. Okay. Oops. All right. Gentlemen, are you ready? Sure. Okay. Begin. Both of these contestants indicated incredibly well last time. What we've done to make their lives more difficult than they need to be is put their indicators in a position that they're not used to. Tom's plan failed. <laughs> that was a good idea, Tom. We should have just had them walk to the other side. No, because then they'd be on a normal lay side. Yeah, this is bass right. backwards. Oh, okay. It's not yeah. that bad. Tom's plan did not fail. I jumped to conclusions. It's just different enough, right? That's true. <laughs> Add a little twist to it. You know what could be fun, although it wouldn't be good for a final? What if we didn't let them use an indicator? seconds left, boys. What if we didn't Do let them... What if we didn't let him use an indicator? Or a stylus, that'd be fun. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Twenty seconds remaining. No, I mean just like flat out and make him fucking eyeball. Yeah. I I I'm a fan of eyeballing and uh five four three two one uh, keys down. Up. All right, gentlemen, no matter who won today, you both did a heck of a good job getting this far. I, who, that's okay. They could have come moved it. We pay people for that. Nice. You are shitting me. You are shitting me. Dude, I don't care what happens. Yeah, right. Let's double, let's double check here, yeah. For those of you at home, that thing ain't moving. Oh, okay. We have a winner here. All right, Peter, thanks for playing. Peter, don't go anywhere, Peter. You're not, you're not. You, sir, did an absolutely fantastic job. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. That is better than I certainly could do in that time frame. Here's your reward. That stack right there is yours. Yeah, real money. <laughs> make it rain, baby. Make it rain. And for Eric Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> and Ed Anderson, you get the Lincoln Electric Power MIG 211 with the ZT Fab Fabrication Cart, the Lincoln Electric 1840 Glossy Black with the 4C Lens Technology Field. And now here's the thing that's going to make this next part of the competition even more challenging. My truck's right up there. 
You're going to want to get this loaded quick. <laughs> this is a hell of a prize. I wouldn't mind one of these. This is like one-tenth the weight of my MIG welder here, and then 30 times the brains, yeah. One-tenth of the weight of mine, too. Yeah, right. So any, uh, any helpful advice for, for next year's competitors? He actually has to put his name on the belt. Yeah, actually, yeah. There we go. Don't overthink it. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Weren't you two against each other like a couple years back? Yeah. yeah. You were. You guys were. There you go, man. Oh, thank you again. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We've got a winner! Congratulations, sir. So, Mr. Edward Anderson took home the, uh, uh, took home the belt, took home the welder, the welding cart, and all the gear pack and everything, so congrats, Edward Anderson. Uh, good job, and I couldn't, some of those guys were dialing it in, in 45 seconds, uh, there was a guy that got it within like two or three thousandths. Incredible. Go try it on your lathe right now. Go put a four jaw in there, and see how fast you can dial something in in 45 seconds. Stop, stop the clock hard, and see how close you are. It's not easy, so uh, respect to these guys. Okay, last up, we finally called the, or we finally pulled the ticket for the uh, milling machine winner, and we gave him a call. Okay, from Precision Matthews, a PM 728VT, uh, a set of precision collets, two inch boring head, and uh, some slideway lubricant. I'm ready for you to, don't rip your fingernails off. The bu them buckets hurt. Yep. You just got to be gentle with them. Yep. All right. There okay. There's no tickets No tickets on the lid. Not a lot, not a lot of tickets. Let's hold that. Do I have just one ticket? Dave Harris in the 951 area code. Dave Harris in the 951 area code. I don't know whether he's here or not. I have no, I have no way of knowing if this is online or in person. Everything was mixed. Mr. Dave Harris in the 951 area code. Let's call Mr. Dave Harris. Can you hold my mic? All right, I'll dial him up right now. Mr. Dave Harris, if you are watching the live stream, we are calling you right now. Don't say it out loud. No, I won't. Well, it says he it says he's in California. Yep. I know nine five one is in California. Yeah, it's seventy one county. Yep. Uh, I'm looking for Mr. Dave Harris. That's me. My name's Stan with Barzy Industrial. Are you on the premises? Uh, no, I am not. Okay. Did you play online or did you play in person for a milling machine? Uh, I bought it when I bought my tickets. Got it. Are you? So you're not here right now. Uh, you are still a you are still a winner. Um, there's a milling machine sitting here for you. No shit. Uh, I wouldn't shit. I would. You're live on the air. Don't cuss. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> that's all right. I forgot to tell you. I was I was recording you. I got uh, I got forced to go to work today, so I couldn't be there. I'm I'm really appreciative. I never expected that. Well, uh, I tell you, Dave. You can. Uh, you're welcome to. Pick it up tomorrow, or I can figure out how to run it over to you. I, I don't know. What city are you in? Uh, so I live on the south side of Riverside, but I am stuck at work today and tomorrow. Okay. Uh, we, can, we, can arrange some, we can arrange something for Monday, no problem. Let me, uh, let me make some phone calls, and I'll see if I can arrange a pickup truck, and then we'll, uh, we'll go well, from there. Is this a good number for you? This is a good number to call me back. Uh, I'll, I'll be happy to deliver it for you, too. I've got a truck I can load, and I can bring it to you. 
whatever you want to do, stay in touch, and uh, congratulations on winning the, the uh, milling machine. Well, thank you so much. This is so unexpected. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you putting on the event every year. I've been going for a little bit. Very good. All right. Uh, thanks for, thanks for uh, supporting Bar Z. Okay, thank you. Bye now. Best call he got today. Uh, that's the best phone call that boy ever got in his life right there. Well, if you stuck with me this long, I appreciate it. I know this was a pretty long video. I did delete all of the raffle, uh, but I do want to acknowledge Char's Tool for the wonderful prizes they sent over. And uh, special thanks to Rich over there. Um, and thanks to all our other sponsors. You know, uh, you guys know who you are. Uh, you guys saw them throughout the event. Uh, I, don't, I don't have them all committed to memory, but the list is long and distinguished. All right. I appreciate you guys watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.